really bless women in your life. And right a while. Or if you have had any part in raising, you know it can be a wonderful experience in the world and you aspire. Time you might want to. What we fondly refer I won't tell it here. But it vividly. Today we're going to look at Paul's opening comment to Timothy. I'm going to do that under a title. If you haven't read it yet, you can go. The title of the message is, Mamas, Please Help Your Babies. Turn to 2 Timothy. After one. Read verses 1 to 5. We're going to focus in on verse 5. We went through the pastoral epistles several years ago. 1 Timothy, Titus, 2 Timothy. This is Paul's last writing. When we went through it at the time, I told you it's fascinating to me what was on his mind when he wrote this letter. Fascinating. Same with me. Follow along. Second Timothy. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, according to the promise of the life that is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve as I as did my ancestors with a clear conscience. That I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. That I remember your tears. I long to see you that I may be filled with joy. I'm reminded of your sincere faith, faith that dwelt first in your grandmother and your mother, and now, I am sure, dwells in you. Read together. Errant, fallible, all sufficient. And I pray that, you know, the desire today, women will recognize faithfulness, no matter what's happening, things that we've seen. Source of encouragement, face challenges. What are God made them? Challenges. Bless you. Well, in 1976, country music. Artist Ed Bruce and his wife Patsy wrote a song entitled Mamas, Don't Let Your Babies Grow Up to Be Cowboys. Two years later, Waylon Jennings and uh, Willie Nelson recorded the song in their Waylon and Willie album. You know, I knew some of them. And, uh, and it became a hit. Number one on the billboard music. And uh, sort of it's become iconic country music. Today. So much so that you can still hear it played. In fact, it was heard this recently as I was kind of about how we wanted to deal with this particular day and the text for this. And if you, you know the lyrics, of course, mamas don't let babies grow to be cowboys, let them guitar, drive out the trucks, let them be doctors and lawyers and such. Mamas don't let your babies grow to be cowboys because they'll never stay home and they'll always, they're always alone. Eat. Well, it seemed, it seemed too negative for me to say mamas, don't let your babies grow up to be pagan. So I wanted to tweak it. 
Mamas, please help. The gospel had not come to Timothy very, very long time. It hadn't been there a while. So it's intriguing to me. And when Paul writes Timothy, last letter, opening verses, tells Timothy in verse 5, I'm reminded. What did he think about? What did he think about when he thought about Timothy? He called him a son. A tremendous relationship. I'm reminded of your sin. Faith. We're going to look at that word since. Faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure dwells. Know that there are no second generation Christians. All Christians are first generation Christians. In other words, you don't you don't live off the faith of somebody else. You cannot ignore that in a in a culture primarily pagan and secular, that the gospel found such entrance that a grandmother was brought to faith. Through her witness, her example, or or alongside with her, her daughter brought to faith in Christ. Lois, Eunice. Their witness, used by God, Timothy. Here's how we think it went. Their Christian witness. Formative. Paul's coming to preach the gospel. And I think one of the reasons Paul came to faith in Christ. That was preparation. Groundwork was laid by his grandmother. By his this word sincere faith, interesting word. We've told you through the years as we've studied languages here in, in Bible studies. And in Greek has a way of having a word and then negating that word with what's called an alpha privilege, of putting an A in front. You are a, a theist. You are someone who believes in a, in a near God, God who is active. I read the history of our country, you know, a lot of our forefathers were deists. They believed in an inactive God, distant God, sort of wound the world up and was just letting it run down. That's a deist. Theist is one who believes God is involved in lives. He's involved in providence. He's involved in his theist. Lydia was a theist. Till the Lord opened her heart. Put an A in front of that, the word becomes atheist. You go from believing in a near God to not believing in God. Atheist. Well, this is a word like that. It's the word hypocrite. With the alpha in front of it. So the sincere case means unhypocritical. I told you in the past, hypocrite, our word hypocrite is not translated from, is transliterated. Greek word hypocrates, it's spelled in a sort of, see it, hypocrite. So a person who wears the mask, person who pretends, person who plays a part, really taken out of the theater of the big, if you've seen the big, overly exaggerated smiling mask and overly exaggerated frowning mask, that comes out of the stage play, the actor. Paul said, Grandmother Lois 
at an unhypocritical, a genuine, so their witness, Paul knew them, around them, they had quite a testimony. First thing we think about today is if we're going to help our babies grow up Christians, and you and I know that we can't make only God makes Christians. But we can be in the climate, cultivate the greenhouse, set a context for the plant, grow forward. Heard the adage, what you what you do sounds so loudly I cannot hear what you're saying. Come an example. I want to commend to you, Lois and Eunice, your example. Someone you can pray, dear God, make me like one or both of these. Some of you here are. You're, you are a Lois. And you are a unit. Some of you I'm speaking to have already raised your children. Now you're watching your children raise their children. Less. Something of the world. Some are in the early stages of raising children. Wherever you are in this, some of you do not have children, but, but we, we all need to have that sincere faith, Lois, unhypocritical. Paul uses this word different places throughout his writings. I just want to look at it real quickly, see how he uses it. Romans 12, 9, let love be genuine. That's the word, unhypocritical. Let love be genuine. Not Love not fingers crossed behind your back. Love not love yet, but First Corinthians thirteen. Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Second Corinthians, he says in chapter six, verse: A purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, Holy Spirit, love. Word of love is agape. So you would think, well, Paul wouldn't need to have an adjective, would he? Yes, because some people counterfeit agape. He wants to put an adjective. Genuine agape. Unhypocritical. Not saying I love you and acting like I don't love you. Saying I love you, flowing out of a doing, practice, the habit, of demonstrating love. In 1 Timothy 1 5, interesting, the, the letter Paul wrote, or he wrote the one we're looking at. The aim of our charge is love that issues from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. He uses that, that combination again, that unhypocritical. His first letter to Timothy. Peter uses it, 1 Peter 1 22, having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere faith. Brotherly love. You get a pattern here? Genuine love. Sincere faith. Sincere brotherly love. That one of those words for love that by uh, I am your companion. Traveling. Lord willing in Lord willing in the morning go by to see my sister. Here in St. Luke's. I've asked. Make it. He's an older companion. Kind of taken over the role. Matriarch. Health. Daily. Your brotherly love. James 3.17. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruit, partial and hypocritical. There were some other terms that were synonyms. 
In fact, our word comes right from the Latin sinna terra. Again, be sincere. That's not translated in our in our transliterated from Latin sinna terra. Sinna terra meant without wax. Is that even translates well. It's in marketplace of the Roman world. Artisan make anything from very valuable vases. I told years ago that if it's really expensive, it's a vase, it's a vase. Or they would make these containers to uh, carry things. They would take this pottery in a fragile setting, and something time consuming. So some of the some of the unscrupulous cover the flaws in there. The idea was that you would get a piece intact, hadn't broken during the process. So the unscrupulous artisans found a way to take wax on a pot that might crack while it stuff, and they would they would apply wax carefully work it through that, and then cover it with residue. For all appearances, those who were really good at it, you had an intact piece. But the consumer wanted a sinicerda. There was this Greek word, synonym. Literally means they would do in the marketplace was they would take this piece, hold it up to the light of the did that thought if there were so you have this combination of ideas, this word sincere Latin. Without wax, imagine the process. You be shopping, you go to say, I like this. Is it without wax? That moment, the artisan is on the spot. He tells you, Well, yes, this is the finest thing. You've got sunlight. The unscrupulous artisans, their, their biggest fear was that you would pick it up where you paid for it. No. Saw no cracks, no, no patches. Sincere piece of pot. Philippians. Also, so that you may prove what is excellent. So be pure. And there's the word. There's the word for sun tested. You may be sun tested and blameless. Peter uses it in 2 Peter 3. This is now the second letter that I'm writing to you. In both of them, I'm stirring up your sun tested by way. So you have these word groups. The idea of an unhypocritical. How are we going to help children grow up to be Christians? First of all, we cannot. By grace, by grace, they will be. Lord challenges, particularly since biblical times and separation of the biblical times, husband would go off.
wife would stay home, dwelling with fascinating stories about nurtured them. Their children were, were young and ready to be weaned. Her mother would take the food, put it in her mouth, do it, do it until she broken it. You and I would call Ablam, Gerber, Atkinson, feed. Taking into her, making festival. That nourishment. Mom would be the one around the children. Challenged to live unhypocritical. Challenged to live a son tested. None of us are without. The point is not perfect. The point was genuine. My mother lived a very tough life. Married a man. Interesting. Father came. Think about what. God. Very difficult. Perfect. Uh, any. He had a. Counseling, but and had a thing to say to me that it Now I evoke. She got completely and thoroughly exasperated with me. She said to me, Do you want to be like your bank? Life she him raising it in a setting where we're hypocritical. Form blessed her. Children want to be the third ones. And walking in I'm arguably the happened there. She didn't save any of us. I said at her funeral, I said, if you've come here hear us talk about Marzell as if she was some extraordinary person of nation for the made herself available. 
in a very real sense, modeled. to parents who say, I just can't get my kids to go to church. I just don't know what I'm going to do. Oh. Mother, drag me. Couldn't have been pleasant for her. I know there were times when she thought, you know, Number five for crying out loud. I should have learned something by now. Get kids. Carried me early on. That was easy enough. Carried me, took me to Miss Whit Miss Biddy and Miss Mally Higgins, mother and daughter. Got a little older. Walked. I look back. And I believe if somebody would have walked up to me, do when you stopped laughing. That's not a Promise. Help. By modeling, letting them captivate by the word of Father's Day. So. Living, see, living without hope. They Let them hear. Children need to hear. So that they know that prayer is. They need to see the light like the psalmist. I'm going to tell you a little secret. Most cases, I think I was in most cases, children pick up the hesitancy. Parents. Thomas said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house. He grieves in Psalm 42 about how there was a time when he would go with the, with the throng, with the multitude, to church. Mother tells about when they lived in Tioga, Louisiana. First Baptist Church. First, I think, top of a hill. All right. They would pull up and down the street were people who, who tended for They would be coming out of the house on Sunday. More people would join. By the time they got to the church, there would be something like a throng, like the psalmist cried. Not that we don't do that anymore. That meant. Glad. You model. Let them know that no matter how culture, our culture is. I grew up. Baby, 
mantra, baby boo. Feels good. Have today. Someone's coming to speak on our campus. Vice President's coming to speak. Happened? Feels good, do it. Information. Authority. Feelings. Devil danced because are deceitful and desperately feeling all kind of mischief. Now, grown, should be grown. Young men and women, safety people, coloring books to color to from the tree. Poster, huggy bears, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, we're seeing the demise of our. So that I would suggest to you, the hardest time, mamas, grow up. Harder than at any time, challenging than it. Your labor as a mother is much. Labor, mother is on the front lines of fighting for the soul of you. Must do all you can. Speak the gospel that transforms the power of the God to the life of the child. And grandparents, we don't get off the hook. Had a visit, hard to say in advance. Visit three, five grandchildren, Pope Pope. And plenty of opportunity. Faithfully trying. Help their children. We don't get off the hook. We make jokes about it. Send them to grandma's. They'll spoil. Love being a grandparent because I can hold them, do whatever I want to, and then give them back to their parents. But, but what's not more than ever, follow me now, when, when the when geographically children our children can be scattered and going in all sorts of directions from their parents. They need culture telling their children, our grandchildren, not to be a boy. Young computer. Quote. They used to denial. Apology. So you would think the parents learned that they have a young murderer. They're concerned. Our pronoun, our one. Don't offend or insult. Pronoun.
You may live and you may be in the situation now. not come back over here's what we know I hope if your children grow up followers of Jesus that gospel spoken in regularly that gospel lived perfectly albeit lived before them how to correct perfect living of the really a pretty straightforward quickly repent that too what did you do pray pray you walk precious now look thrown into Plant yet remains fruitless. Continue to water that part of us. Wherever you are in this journey, whether you are a woman who has played a great role still in living unhypocritical, all who are walking. There's a sense, stop at some point, which children in this congregation, I being my helper, I want to encourage you, parenting of the occasion, speak to the, practice the God's given. Raise them in the Say the same things about the gospel that you I don't want to challenge you and teach you so you are saying things about in this together. My children, grandchildren, your children, grand and I knew my dad was a hypocrite. Dear ladies, thank you for embracing Thank you for modeling its to Recognize that our God's a God. Helper, suitable to God comes. Those of you who have who have demonstrated love to our little ones here, willing to, willing to forego worship, corporate worship to our extended, willing to teach and then cover teachers with FBI. They I recognize that God's given us these babies. We're in a battle, souls of the soul of this. God being my helper, I will. all I can to model the transforming power of the gospel to speak the transforming power of the gospel to pray for the transforming power of the gospel over these children we see Christ form thank you pray the Lord anybody ever give you
those trying to tear it down. Dear Holy Father, we bow before you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for the gospel. We thank you for your faith. I thank you for that evidence here. I pray for that to abound more and you will encourage our ladies, help us be a blessing to them. Find them and I pray that you're against them. They are a Lord, we need help. We can't save our own. You've taught us in Put them in the way. Or trying to do. Strengthen. Save. Transform home. Gospel. If they become gospel out. Culture. Pitch blackness. Be the light beyond. Ask all this in.